Welcome! This is a new style for me to teach. I'm trying to experiment different styles in order to get some insight on what works better. I call this teaching style as Glided Quiz. Maybe there are other good names for it, I'm not very sure because I'm actually new to video training. But if there is a better and more common name for this teaching style, please let me know. So, what do I mean by Guided Quiz? We all know what a quiz is. Usually, the quizzes are done by the learner periodically while learning a new topic. It is very useful because it puts the learner into a more active mind state. I wonder if it is possible to join quizzes with video training. What if there were some video trainings that would consist of quiz questions? Present a question to the learner, let the learner think a bit, then present the answer of the question with some explanation. Wouldn't that be useful? I will try to see if this works or not. Please let me know your own experience, so we can improve this style in a better direction. So, what is the quiz problem that we are going to solve now? Let's assume we have a data frame as this. The data frame has three columns, name, age and state. We want to sort this data frame by its columns. There are alternative ways to sort a data frame. I will ask about some of these alternatives, not all of them. First question. How do you sort this data frame by its name column? The letter A should come first. That is, the order should be ascending order. Here is the answer. You use the order function. The order function is inside the base or standard R library. The function expects a vector. The function orders this vector. The input argument can be of any primitive data type such as character, numeric or factor. The return value is an integer vector that corresponds to the indices of the input vector. For example, assume that we have a vector of three elements, Apple, IBM and Microsoft. Calling order function on this vector returns an integer vector, 1, 2, 3. Now, let's change the order of the elements in the vector and call order function again. This time, we obtain the result 3, 1, 2. What do these numbers mean? 3 is the first element in resulting vector. So, this means that third element of input argument should be the first element when it is ordered. First element of input argument should be the second element when it is ordered. Now, return back to our solution. This solution consists of two parts. First, we have a data frame object called as df. Second, we pass this data frame object an expression called as order df dollar name. This expression returns an integer vector, which is actually the order of indices of df dollar name column when they are in order. This expression is passed as the first argument to the df object's bracket operator. Remember, bracket operator takes, takes two arguments. The first argument corresponds to the row indices. The second argument corresponds to column indices. Since the expression order is passed to the first argument, the result of it orders the rows of data from object according to the name column's order. Next question, sort the same way by name column, but this time use a data table instead of data frame. The solution is very similar to data frame solution. This time we don't put an additional comma after the order expression. We put comma because data table's bracket operator assumes that the first argument is the indices of the rows, whereas Data frames bracket operator expects the indices of the columns first. I always prefer to use data tables instead of data frames because indexing style is more intuitive and also it is much faster than, faster than data frames. Next question. Reverse the order. Sort in the same way by using the name column of the data frame or table, but this time 
The letter Z should come first. Thus, use descending order, not ascending order. This is very simple. Just put minus sign in front of the column that you want to be in descending order. Of course, you might ask, why did we put minus sign? What does it mean? How will I remember this rule now? To make remembering easier, think about a very simple example. Assume that we have a vector of three elements, 5, 10, and 20. Which one is first when ordered normally? Note that normal order is ascending order, according to our common expectation. 5 is first and 20 is last. Now, let's take the negatives of, the, of these numbers. Which one comes first when ordered naturally? The smallest one is the first one, and the smallest one here is minus 20. So, taking the negatives of the numbers reverses the orders of them. This is a universal fact. It is always valid. And you can use this in order to remember the ordering rule better. Next question. Sort using dplyr style. Namely, use pipes and arrange function of dplyr. If you have not used dplyr till now, I highly recommend you to check tutorials on it. It is such a wonderful data handling tool. It is revolutionary because it made so many great improvements in the process of data cleaning and data analysis jobs. The solution with the plier is much simpler than previous solutions. We pass the data object dt or df as first argument using pipe operator. Then we pass the criteria of ordering as second argument to the arrange function. You might wonder, why did I say second argument? There is just one argument inside the parentheses of arrange function. Where is the second argument? Pipe operator is a convenience function. It is optional. If we use common way of calling a function, then we can omit the pipes. Here, we pass to arrange function two arguments, as it is clear, dt and name expressions. In fact, Pipe operator does exactly the same thing as this ordinary way of calling a function. It pipes the preceding argument as the first argument to the next function. Thus, pipe passes dt object as the first argument of a range function, so name becomes the second argument of a range function. Back to our solution. Note that there is absolutely no difference between using data table or data frames. This is very cool because this kind of small differences cause lots of mistakes. I think that the plier style is much more intuitive than using order function in base R library because of at least two reasons. First, you don't need to repeat the data frame object every time in front of the column name. Second, all the dplyr data manipulation functions have the same basic interface. You don't need to remember all the differences between different functions. Always, the first argument is the data object, and the second argument is the criteria of data manipulation. Additional arguments are usually specified with their parameter, parameter name. The intuitivity of the interface is very important for effective programming because it lets the programmer to get into the flow while working. Next question, using with and base order functions. There is a function called with that lets the programmer to specify the column names without prepending them with their data containers. This might be used in order to make order function to work a little bit like dplyr. How to use it to sort the data frame? Here is the solution. In this case, it is not actually easier to write nor read than ordinary way. You have to repeat the data container object inside with, but you don't need to repeat it again inside order expression because order expression is passed as an argument to with function. 
Putting a new function like width increases the burden on the programmer because now we need to check the order of the parameters and parentheses. This is more difficult to write and read. Next question. Reverse the order, use the player style. Remember, in base order function, we need to put minus operator in front of the column expressions that should be in descending order. How to reverse the order in the plier? In this case, we need to wrap the column name inside the DESC function. The name of this function is the abbreviation for the word descending. Not a big difference from ordinary way of putting minus operator in front, but still I think the plier style is easier to read because you don't, you don't need to remember that minus corresponds to descending order, but not to ascending order. Next question, sort by two columns. First, sort using data frames and base order function, but this time sort by two columns, not one column. First, order in ascending order of state name, then sort by descending order of age column. Here is the solution. This time, we pass multiple arguments to order function. Note that the dfh expression has a minus operator in front. Now, do the same sorting, but use data table instead of data frames. Again, a very similar solution as before. The only difference is that data table does not have a comma after order expression. Next question. Do the same sorting, but this time use dplyr functions, pipe and arrange. Solution is here. We pass two arguments to arrange function. First argument is state column and second argument is the expression descending h. The code is still pretty clear to read and write. These are just a small set of alternatives to sort data frames and data tables. There are much more alternatives to do this, but I think these are the most common ones. So which one is better? Should we learn and use all of them or should we stick to one style? If so, which one? Everybody has a different taste when it comes to grammar rules. My choice of interface is dplyr. I think that dplyr is the most intuitive style among the alternatives. The fundamental reason for this is that dplyr has a declarative programming style. That is, it lets the programmer think in terms of what needs to be done, not in terms of how to do something. Even in this small example, Using data table or data frame with base order function requires the programmer to think in implementation details. The programmer needs to think about the order of indexes first and then combine that with the ordering of data table and this puts an additional mental burden on our minds. Dplyr abstracts the programmer from these kind of implementation details completely.